Thank you, Daryl. I always appreciate all the work that you and the rest of the continuing education team do to make these uh, meetings a success. Good afternoon, everyone. It's so nice to be here with all of you virtually today. For those of you who have not been to one of these meetings, my name is Brittany Wright. My pronouns are they, them, and I am the Community Engagement and Resources Consultant for the Bureau of Library Development. As you're coming into the room, if you could state in the chat what library you're from and whether or not you'd like to be uh, subscribed to the Community Connections newsletter and or the Connection Creators email list, that'd be greatly appreciated. I don't send out too many messages on the Connection Creators email list, but the Community Connections newsletter is the monthly newsletter for community engagement, and it's chock full of resources, opportunities, and all sorts of fun things that uh, I hope will be a benefit to you and your libraries. So for today, uh, while we do have an agenda, I am of course always open to any topics that uh, all of you want to discuss, some of you included in your registration, some topics you wanted to talk about, and I'm looking forward to uh, getting to uh, those topics. And to answer your question, Ross, um, we have your uh, email uh, when you registered. So as long as you just say that you're fine with being subscribed, I'll just do some wizardry behind the scenes and take care of that for you. Uh, so today we'll be discussing, uh, oh goodness, my webcam has not been on. <laughs> Thank you. Terribly sorry. <laughs> Hello everyone. You can see my floating head now. I wonder if I can fix, I'm so sorry, let me fix that just a little. Sorry about that. <laughs> I didn't realize that was on. You'll have to forgive me, I'm getting over a mild cold, flu, flu cold. My brain is a little, a little fuzzy. Um, but today we'll be discussing what do you need from the Community Engagement and Resources Program, Financial Literacy Programming, Story Walks, and Successes and Challenges during 2021 because we are somehow in 2022 and I'm still having to remember that when I write documents. <laughs> but yes, if there's a topic you would like to discuss, please feel free to chime in at uh, any time. Certainly, OUD, I can certainly try to move the microphone closer. We were working with that a bit earlier. Is that better? Should I just like get real close to the mic? <laughs> <laughs> Do let me know if I am, you know, not loud enough. We are uh, working with some small technical hiccups. So, uh, yes. So if there's any, you know, if I'm too loud, if I'm too quiet, please definitely let me know and I will do my best to become louder. Um, if uh, any of you have a webcam or microphone, you know, you are more than welcome to turn them on. I would love to not be the only sort of floating head during this session. And I love seeing uh, all of your smiling faces and hearing your voices and meeting, you know, new people to these meetings. Um, so, as I said, to start things off, I'd like to take some time and discuss the ways that the Community Engagement and Resources Program can help you at your library. I really want to get a better sense of uh, what you specifically need from the program. Uh, that could be marketing, that could be outreach, my assistance with connecting you, connecting your library to a community-based organization, uh, things of that nature. <laughs> so, to that end, um, my first uh, question for all of you is, uh, what is one partnership that you would uh, love to have, that you would love for the Community Engagement and Resources Program to uh, assist you with facilitating. Uh, for example, at a previous meeting, a attendee was uh, talking about how they would like to partner with an organization to provide canning services at the library. And feel free to post in the chat or uh, talk via the microphone. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay. So uh, Mary is saying that small business trainings, okay, that is definitely, um, as a positive, that is something that I am looking into uh, to help all of you with small business entrepreneurship. Uh, I actually just saw on Twitter in Georgia, uh, a library is, uh, they just put out some entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneur in a bag kits that come with a laptop, a printer, a few other resources as well. It was really fascinating. And I can certainly post the question in the chat. If anyone needs any other sort of uh, examples of uh, partnerships that I could assist with facilitating, that could also be uh, community conversations on various topics. That's, you know, up to what your library wants to do. Okay, Lisa posted in the chat, uh, for smaller municipal libraries, it would be nice to be able to partner with large sponsors for summer reading programs and prizes. The larger county libraries often have big sports teams as sponsors. Municipal libraries working together as a consortium to share a large sponsor would be great. That would be great. Um, that, that really would be excellent. And uh, I will definitely be. <laughs> I appreciate that, Amy. <laughs> You'd be surprised the kind of things that come up in these conversations. We end up learning about all sorts of things. But okay, um, let me see. Uh, in terms of uh, the program, what is one area that you would uh, love for the community engagement program to focus on? So, you know, Again, do you want uh, me to focus more on, well, not me, <laughs> in, some, in some ways me, do you want the program to focus more on, say, e-government resources, you know, uh, the census, tax forms, social services, to focus more on uh, assistance with how to market the programs and services you already provide, how to assist with outreach, how to develop community partnerships, Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, sorry, I just, it's, I have a horrible time typing. Um, I think, you know, for, for us in Palm Beach County, you know, the, the connecting with social services is always good. We've had the issue with, um, I know some libraries have eviction uh, assistance, which we've been doing here at the library. We have food stamps, we have career source. Um, but, you know, I, I'm always looking for new partnerships to potentially help the community, but I really think the community conversations would be good, even like getting community feedback, making sure we're serving them, uh, you know, with their needs. Um, that, that's definitely something I would like to, to learn more about and facilitating conversations. I never felt very comfortable in, you know, guiding a conversation. Yeah, no, definitely. I fully, I fully get that. <laughs> yes, ways to get community feedback. Exactly that, Lisa. Um, for those who haven't uh, read the chat, Lisa is saying uh, yes to helping develop, help helping with developing community partnerships and addressing community needs and interests. And also, yes, Ross, uh, marketing, that is also an area that I'm working on, which is <laughs> slightly part of the reason why I keep bringing it up, because it is something that I'm 
trying to do to help uh, libraries. Okay, getting getting a lot of good feedback about uh, developing partnerships and marketing. Great. Um, I know also, Jamie, you had left in your registration that uh, you were hoping that somebody had um, a success story about a successful legal clinic. And uh, while I don't have any specifics on that, I do know that while I was looking at the Alachua County uh, Library System's Facebook, I saw that they have the Alachua Law and the Library Program and I saw you earlier. Yes, Sylvia. Uh, I don't know whether or not you can maybe talk about that just a just a little bit. Whether that's maybe an area that you and Jamie could make a connection on. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else took the civil legal justice pathways to civil legal justice uh, training. But I know they, you know, Maryland has always had really successful legal clinics because they partner with the local uh, legal aid and things like that. Our legal aid is strapped, <laughs> like they they can't partner right now, uh, you know. So I was like, I don't know if there's any other organizations that people have been working with where they they've had successful legal clinics. Um, it could be like on a specific topic, but um, I've I've never had much luck in trying to set that up. Uh, no, Emily, I'm not. <laughs> but thank you. Just catching up on the, <laughs> just catching up on the chat a little bit. Um, Sarah dropped a link in the chat about a shared spreadsheet all about story walks from the Colorado Virtual Library, which is great. And uh, we'll definitely probably be circling back to that when we talk about story walks. But to get back to what you were saying, um, Ross, uh, in terms of wanting assistance with marketing, uh, how are you currently marketing uh, your programs and services at your library? Okay, so social media posts and uh, word of mouth. Okay. Ugh, sorry. Still getting over that cold. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, Adam. Adam is saying that newsletters help as well. And I definitely uh, do notice that even for uh, my program. And, uh, you know, if you have something uh, if you perhaps have a list serve of sorts for your area, maybe list serves um, have to some degree kind of gone a little bit by the wayside, but it depends on the community. Um, I do know biking communities still have pretty active list serves, so <laughs> that might be <laughs> an area to look into. Are you, um, are your social media posts just on Facebook and Twitter, Ross, or are you also branching out into maybe like mm, Instagram, TikTok? Oh, and Amy, uh, Amy also brought up a really good point on how to circulate information with local moms groups, local online events, calendars, and posting handouts at local grocery stores may be helpful, and arts and culture council. 
definitely. Um, if it's small business related, you might be able to partner with your local uh, your local uh, chamber of commerce. There we go. <laughs> Um, well, why don't we uh, why don't we throw it to the uh, attendees in in this meeting? Does anyone uh, currently in this meeting does anyone have a TikTok that they use for their library? I know a few I know a few libraries do, but I'm actually trying to remember if there are any in Florida. Okay, so Candace uh, Candace's library. Oh. <laughs> Okay, and Osceola, they have a TikTok. That, yeah, I, I think I may have been thinking of you guys, the Winter Park Library, Michaela. Um, I know some libraries have had some success with, uh, with TikTok, so. It might be at least, it might uh, be a method to at least get them interested and in the door. Discord is also um, an excellent option. Uh, you can make your own uh, sort of Discord, you can make your own Discord server and get really creative with it. And it's also a good way to tie in if you're doing events like Minecraft events or um, things of that nature. But uh, let me see. Okay, circling back, uh, OUT, and also please let me know if I'm if I'm pronouncing anyone's name wrong. Um, is saying that we send out press releases to local newspapers for bigger programs and initiatives. Uh, have you have you had a good turnaround with that? Do you find that uh, people tend to show up more with the press releases? Yeah, we actually, um, for our bigger initiatives, like summer reading, um, we're doing an upcoming touch a truck. We do find that the extra little help um, brings in a little bit more awareness. We even have um, added some of the local country clubs. They do their own little press releases. And so we've developed pretty good relationships with, with their uh, editor. So, um, so it does help, you know, I feel like at this point, every, everything helps. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Uh, Emily brings up a really interesting prospect, which is uh, having a Twitch account. Um, I'm, <laughs> my mind's just kind of like thinking about so many different possibilities of what you could do on the account outside of uh, streaming games because, uh, Several people I know just use Twitch to actually uh, make dice and uh, other arts and crafts. So it could be an, it could be another avenue for you know uh, kit making. Uh, Brittany, can I answer a question they have on on there for me? Yes. This is Candace. Um, so they were asking what sort of things we do on next door, and um, somebody else was saying that they were shot down for using it. Um, we had a little bit of a journey of um, trying to get on Nextdoor. We tried to create our own account on Nextdoor, um, and that didn't work at first, you know, as our own kind of thing because we could only post in our vicinity if we were doing it ourselves. But what we ended up able to do and why we were able to do it recently was we realized that the county government had um, a Nextdoor account that was able to be, it was kind of one of the ones that had like extra allowances on it where they could post stuff that did affect the entire county and like anybody who signed up for next door in our county would always see everything that the county posts, the county government. And so we found out from them that they're able to um, assign people uh, like county departments underneath the county um, header so we got in touch with the right person they added us onto the account so we're like latched on to theirs um, and we found that from we found that out from the depart uh, the health department was using the county's account and we would see the health department posting a lot 
and we knew the guy and we were like, how are you doing that? <laughs> you know, so he met with us. He told us how he was able to um, get on there. And so the county added us as an extension. And um, so now we're able to post. And when we post, we have access to the entire county. And so the, the kind of things that we um, try to post on there are things that are, um, I mean, we're kind of trying to do anything and everything a little bit, but really um, we're trying to utilize it because we can target which areas of the county. And since we have six locations and like, you know, somebody in one location may not care about what's happening at the library way on the other side of the county from them. So if there are things happening at one specific branch, we'll post about the things happening at that one specific branch just to that community around that branch, you know? And if it's something bigger than that, that we think people all over should know that is happening and they might want to travel to a branch to see that it's happening, um, then we'll post it at large. But most of the time we're trying to utilize the areas that it gives us um, the ability to post to. Okay, that is super cool. It also illustrates a really good point of reaching out to your county government and seeing what they're up to. And talking to the health department seems to be a very consistent theme I've noticed sitting in a lot of meetings <laughs> mm -hmm. with libraries is the health department's in the know. They've got that, they've got that secret knowledge. They do, yeah. Mary, Discord is, what is the best way to describe Discord? Discord is a, it is a social media sort of app slash program that allows you to uh, chat with people all across the world. Um, probably the best way to describe it would just be to drop the link to what is Discord. I believe it has a Wikipedia page now. <laughs> yes, and Emily brings up a good point. Uh, your parks, Department Parks and Recreation is also an excellent uh, resource to utilize. This conversation is going great and we are really coming up with some... <laughs> yes, if old chat rooms teamed up with Wikipedia. And Discord's made a lot of upgrades recently to their videos, so it's a lot less uh, janky because it used to be a bit rough initially. Um, so uh, I want to make sure that we do have time to get to everything, so I want to get to this next question, uh, which is, if you recently uh, met an unmet need in your community, could you share with the others how that process went for you? I'm mostly just curious to see um, what sort of uh, innovative programs and techniques that you guys are, you know, doing at your libraries. And I will also, uh, because I know someone had requested previews, and I will also type the question in the chat. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hi, um, I'm Noelia Martinez and I'm the Community Engagement Librarian for the Lee County Library System. Um, I started working here about two and a half uh, on this position um, or related positions about two and a half years ago. And um, I have previously come to know that there is a very big migrant community that is part of our county and I wanted to work uh, initially with the school district because they have the migrant program running. So I partnered with them and we started um, 
meeting people where they are by, you know, going to the migrant camps when the school district was um, visiting. And uh, once the um, closures began, um, we, I, I started reaching out to other community uh, members that were visiting and trying to find that new connection. And um, we partner with a food pantry that goes weekly to the uh, migrant camps. And through that partnership, we have been visiting them um, four different locations, um, one each Wednesday of the month. And um, just uh, working with the people, getting to know the community, assessing what they need. And also we even started doing story times. Uh, so it's, it's covering uh, a community that cannot make it to the library always, um, that has very limited um, mobility and has a lot of language barriers. And it's been going great. Wow, that is amazing. And so fantastic to hear, you know, being able to reach uh, underserved populations like that is just super cool. <laughs> Um, yeah, and people always ask, like, how do you make it happen? Well, it was it started with a phone call, just making a cold, cold uh, call to um, these organizations that I had heard from word of mouth were working with migrant communities, um, and that's how it started. Okay, wow. Um, Emily wants to know whether the food pantry is providing the sites, doing introductions, and or providing transportation, which I'm also curious about. <laughs> so uh, the food pantry is providing the sites. Um, I want to, uh, th there's a trusting issue with these communities and I didn't, I didn't want to see, uh, seem like I was invading their space. So I wanted uh, an organization that they trusted. So the food pantry was the organization they trusted and they've been visiting them for years. Um, they did do the in introductions. And what we did was we coordinated with them and we accompany them during the food pantry distribution. Um, we usually, we are usually there uh, one hour before they get there so that the other volunteers that are bringing um, things like clothing and other donations are there with us. Um, so they um, they did provide the introductions and then transportation, we have our own transportation and we have a, an outreach van that we put absolutely everything we take with us. We have a programming kit for story time. We bring um, books from our deposit collection, which is um, known catalog um, books that we have and we provide them. Most of them are in Spanish. Uh, we work with collection development so that we are included in the weeding calendar, um, not included, but in the communications about the weeding process so that we are aware when the books are coming. Um, and that way we, we can ask for the correct books at the correct time. And um, yeah, basically we sustain a, a communication um, with the provider as well as with the community and they keep, you know, um, I, we haven't done a formal assessment, but I have done informal assessments and I have talked to the people that we're serving to determine what it is it that the library can do for them on site, on location. Um, and I also uh, did an assessment with the workers that have been going. This is a county-wide uh, or system-wide um, initiative. So I have a lot of Spanish speakers that go and then they tell me what they learned, what could be better. Um, and about the experience in general. Okay, yeah, that is, that's great. <laughs> it's such a, you know, needed resource. And thank, thank you, you for sharing that. <laughs> of course. Um, what else has everyone else been sharing while we were listening to that, which was fantastic. Uh, Amy said that we started a chapter of Literary Society and have a regular turnout for it. It's not a book club. It started in a friend's house in Mount Dora. People get together and discuss books. We don't all read the same book. Okay. Um, Amy, I don't know if you want to uh, elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, it does look like you dropped a link. 
oh, okay. So um, some members of the older population get together to talk about books, the way people talk about TV shows. I've certainly been there with a few novels. <laughs> some narrative choices that don't make a whole lot of sense. Amy, how uh, how well received are the uh, bingo cards? Do you find that people are really using them, or that's fair? Some people love the bingo cards, and others don't. Yeah, I think it just I think it just kind of comes down to whether you like bingo or not. I do. really fascinating things coming out of this conversation, which makes me happy. It's always, it's great to hear what you guys are doing at your libraries. Uh, let me see. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. If anyone wants more detailed information, talk to Amy. Um, switching gears to uh, the uh, next topic on our agenda, which is financial literacy programming. Uh, at our last meeting, and I believe I saw, maybe I didn't. Okay, I thought I saw him in the attendee list, but no. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, Michael Bryant from the Broward Public Library had mentioned wanting to find partners to present programs uh, in the library for free. And for uh, those of you who didn't have a chance to attend the webinar back in July of last year, uh, I uh, hosted a webinar with James Chen from Financial Beginnings, uh, and they provide uh, free financial literacy courses. And these programs are suitable for kindergartners all the way up to adults. And uh, semi-recently, they uh, just put out their uh, uh, online uh, learning management system so you don't have to rely just on their uh, on their paper booklets they actually have uh, their own uh, LMS system that you can use instead uh, which is great accessibility is always great and Daryl has just dropped a link to financial beginnings and also a link to that webinar for anyone interested in wanting to watch it and learn more and uh, since we are on the subject of financial literacy, do any of you hold financial literacy courses at your library? What's been the community response to them? Also, please feel free to use your mic if um, <laughs> typing is a bit, you know, strenuous. Okay, Jamie is saying that they do, but their colleague is the one who organizes it. And some have been successful depending on the topic. Credit repair is a big one. Yeah. Okay. Broward Libraries, uh, Mary saying that Broward Libraries Community Engagement hosts financial webinars. Mary is saying that they had some contact before the pandemic, but very little afterwards. Okay, Candace is saying that we used to. Oh, first time home buyer ones were usually well attended. That is a good point, Amy. I actually just recently read, um, I read a lot of Slate articles <laughs> in my free time and I've kind of gotten a little bit addicted to reading pay dirt. And I have read a couple of different letters from recent widows who uh, don't have the 
financial know-how to manage after their partner has passed away. So I, I definitely agree with you that there is a need uh, for recent widows who have never handled the finances. Mary's saying credit repair and debt consolidation are good topics. Um, yes, and Katrina wanted me to uh, make all of you aware, and she just posted it in the chat, that there is a call for presenters for the Florida Literacy uh, Coalition. They're looking for presenters who have a passion to share their knowledge, strategies, resources, and promising practices in adult education and literacy. Um, so on a similar topic. Oh, that that is a good point, Claudia. And I and I know it was it was earlier this month before I was sick, so <laughs> those days are fuzzy. But there was uh, I did see, um, I believe I saw a Florida Library talking about doing a cooking class paired with financial literacy as well. I know also I believe the Maitland Public Library with their Spice of the Month Club. I believe they were also doing a cooking class. Um, so that's, uh, that's also a possible pairing. I think in general, cooking classes should just be more available. Yeah, it's really interesting. Every month there's a different spice and they give a little info about it. And then you come to the library and you pick it up. Oh, yes, Emily, I was talking about canning earlier, like canning fruits and vegetables to make delicious jams and jellies. I just dropped a link to, uh, it's not quite the, uh, looking at it, it's not quite the correct page, but it gives you the idea of the Maitland Public Library Spice Club. Let's see if I can find. It's always so odd trying to find this thing on this website. That is a good point, Oyuki, about wanting to venture into food literacy but waiting for a safer time to roll out. Um, I know some other libraries, not in Florida, but in general, when it comes to food literacy, were doing it where you would just get a kit and you would take the kit home. And sometimes it was paired with um, like a Zoom webinar. So like later that evening, so if you showed up, during the day, you'd pick up all the ingredients to make like a soup, and then you would go home and go to the webinar, and then everyone would uh, cook the item together. So that might be an option to help with uh, some concerns. <laughs> Candace was also saying that Osceola has a Spice of the Month Club, which is self-directed with kits, so that's cool. That is super cool. And Claudia makes a great point. Uh, and ag the agricultural extension would be a good partner for nutrition. And I know the UF IFAS extension does have a, uh, every so often they do put on um, canning uh, demonstrations and classes. Yes, especially for, uh, Lisa is saying, especially for communities that are considered food deserts. There's a map that's out there, and it's a lot of Florida counties where it's just very <laughs> inaccessible in terms of access to healthy food. Um, but okay, uh, I also wanted to uh, make you all aware, because it's coming up, that the FINRA Foundation has announced a grant for libraries to provide financial literacy, education services, and resources. And the uh, deadline for that is March 1st, 2022, which Daryl has just dropped into <laughs> the chat. Yes, Lisa, I will find this map. I don't, uh, unfortunately, I don't have it on me right this second, but I'm going to make myself a note to send that because I am actually on a different computer, so it's not with me.
And um, moving on to my next question, um, that we did touch on it a little bit already, but who have you partnered with in your community to provide financial literacy services? Okay. Mary is saying that they partnered with uh, SCORE, the Senior Corps of Retired Executives. Okay, Chase has also been at some of their uh, outreaches uh, from Mary Garcia this time. <laughs> Um, have you guys, uh, have you, have any of you ever partnered with like your local credit union or even, you know, your national banks for, uh, financial literacy? Okay, uh, Amy Stoltz is saying that our local community bank has offered it to teens, but they were unsure about offering it to adults. And Clarissa is saying that the date that they found, ugh, excuse me, they partnered with the Dade County Federal Credit Union. Thank you, Emily. Emily has dropped into the chat a link to score. And on my end, I was able to find the link to that food desert map a bit faster than I thought. So I put that in the chat as well. But okay, it seems like, um, you know, for the most part, uh, the partnerships have been going pretty well in terms of financial literacy. Um, keeping an eye on the time since we do I still have uh, two more uh, areas to talk about. Uh, I wanted to move on to story walks since we had also talked about it a little bit earlier. Um, and so I've seen many libraries with story walks, such as the uh, Boca Raton Public Library, the Clay County Library System, and the Safety Harbor, Safety Harbor, excuse me, Public Library, uh, all of whom were mentioned in our Stars in the Sunshine State article. You're welcome, Lisa. For those of you who have a story walk, what were some unexpected challenges you faced? And Daryl has uh, helpfully posted in the chat the link to the STARS article about, uh, in this case, uh, Boca Raton's uh, story walks. And, hmm, excuse me, I will repost the question into the chat. Or if you didn't have a chat, if there wasn't a challenge, perhaps there was an unexpected opportunity where you were able to maybe repurpose some old materials you already had at your library to, um, you know, uh, use for a story walk. You had some wooden stakes lying around, some <laughs> extra laminate sheets, that sort of thing. Hey, Brittany. Um, I am with the Booker Tim Public Library. Honestly, we had um, really good partnerships. So the only trouble that we had in getting the story walks off the ground was who was going to dig the holes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we did go the, um, the way of putting in the permanent post with Barking Dogs as the vendor. Um, and that has uh, helped us a lot. Um, it is a higher price point, but we did uh, partner up with our friends groups who are 
uh, who footed the bill. So they liked it so much that they did a second one in another park. Um, our first partnership was with the county in a natural area behind one of our libraries. So that was a nice partnership between th three different organizations. Um, the other one was more internal. And now we are trying to do another one um, in a very high uh, traffic area of the Meissner Park um, area here in downtown Boca, which will give us um, access to a completely different demographic. You know, over there is that you get your nature walkers and stuff like that. So this one, I think, um, will have more visibility and hopefully um, someone someone else can also help foot the bill too. So it's, it's just been really wonderful. Um, we get lots of compliments, not just from families, but from people, just the elderly walking around. Um, and it's really nice. We are um, with the county one, they have a really nice printer that doesn't fade with the pictures. So, so we just get permission from the publishers to reprint them in essence. Um, only one publisher, I think, have we had to um, pay a, a fee for to to use the, the book during the time that it's being displayed. So, but most everyone is willing to do that. Um, and then. The other story walks that we have, we do send them out to be reprinted just so that they last longer. When we first started doing it, um, we were cutting out the books, uh, the pages from the books, and they just really faded, you know. And in the location that we have them, it's very, um, it's very sunny, and yeah, it's it's straight out. So, so you do. We did laminate a couple of times, but even with the lamination, it just wasn't enough to protect it. So, so we do feel investing in um, having them reprinted so that they're, they hold up better um, is working out for us. And now we have a nice little like backlog that we're hoping to use more as like a pop-up, you know, um, once we are able to go back out into the community, you know, where we're thinking if we take our outreach van, we can do a quick story walk pop-up wherever we are because we already have kind of the resources there. But we've, we've enjoyed it and it's one of, our, one of our few successes I feel when we were forced to shut down. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think, you know, being able to use the other stories as a pop-up sort of event is just, um, you know, a great way to repurpose what's already been created. I'm always, I'm always down for zero. Waste, yes, how do we repurpose? <laughs> uh, Michaela wants to know what is the general cost for one story walk? We have temporary story walks only, if anyone has the uh, answer to that. I think we spent three thousand. Um, so again, it was something that we we asked our friends for funding, but they do last forever. And it did go through the first one. Um, did go through a nice tropical storm, and the water did not get in there. Um, so that was very nice. And we haven't. We were afraid of vandalism. You know what happens if someone breaks the plexiglass? And so far, we have not had that experience. Okay, cool. I know Megan um, Megan posted that weather's been a challenge, rain and wind have caused some damage and the sun has caused fading and that it's been hard to gauge how many people have visited the story walk since it's outside and separate from the library building. That, that actually is our second challenge that we're trying to figure out. How do you track um, the stats? Uh, we have bought a trail counter that, you know, if someone walks by it, it will trigger it. So not necessarily is gonna mean that everyone who walks there is gonna be reading that story story walk, but it's a pretty good gauge. However, um, we just need to secure it. We, we bought three, one that we partner with another organization internal to our city. And so we were using that site as a test site to see if it worked. It did work, but then someone walked away with the actual counter. So now we're regrouping to um, put it in a like secure box. So once we figure out, I'll give you the uh, the update because that requires a little bit of a MacGyvering. <laughs> yeah, you really you bet that's, not, that's not something you want to grow legs and walk off. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, no, because that's actually funny because that was something I was going to suggest. So I was going to say, like, yeah, something that like tracks people as they walk by and it like <laughs> it makes a little chirp noise and the number goes up. Uh, Mary wants to know if anyone has uh, partnered with a group to create an outdoor interactive exhibit. Oh, 
Oh no, those were internal. For a second, I was uh, remembering something about escape rooms, but that was for an inter internal inside the building event and not external, which, yeah. <laughs> um, Candace was just mentioning that uh, they've partnered with a small business development center, uh, Primerica Credit Union, Florida Consumer Operation Hope for uh, financial workshops. And Michaela is saying that they partnered with local artists, but fairy doors in our park area. And I remember seeing pictures of those fairy doors. Um, they're, they're super cool looking. Like each and every one is just really imaginative. Yes, uh, Mary is mentioning that the uh, Collier Public Library did a sea turtle uh, outdoor exhibit, and there is actually a STARS article about that. Uh, sea turtles at the library. But uh, as we're coming up towards the end of our time, I did want to get to our uh, last topic on the agenda, which was successes and challenges in 2021. And so I just wanted to ask how the past year went for everyone. You know, what worked well for uh, all of you? And I'm also just going to drop into the chat real fast about, um, actually, wait. No, I'm right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> about the uh, outdoor exhibit that the, uh, specifically the South Regional Public Library did about sea turtles. So. Well, I mean, thinking of uh, one thing that I would say worked well, perhaps for the Winter Park Library, was the new library that you guys got built <laughs> and the uh, <laughs> the uh, massive party that you guys threw to celebrate the uh, opening day. I've seen the pictures and the pictures of that new building are super cool. Okay, Mary saying that uh, going online with webinars was challenging, but they were about to offer several great environmental webinars uh, last year. Oh, Clarissa is saying that one of their branches is a storytelling storytelling garden. Excuse me. Okay. Uh, Mary is saying that they offered high uh, interest environmental science webinars. Emily, you beat me to it. I was I was just about to ask how Winter Park's bike program is going, since uh, in their new site there's a lot more room to uh, bike around, and I think there's also a lake you can bike past and fish in. I don't fish, so it would be more biking for me than anything. And also, yes, I do agree with Michaela. I would love to hear more about this storytelling gar storytelling garden. Oh, okay, so Winter Park was able to get brand new bikes, and they're trying to get more marketing for the bikes for checkouts. That's good. That is good. <laughs> and incidentally, there is a STARS article about <laughs> Winter Park <laughs> Library's bikes. Um, for, those, uh, for those who don't know, STARS in the Sunshine State is a... Um, it's an initiative that we do to highlight the innovative programs and services that Florida libraries do throughout the state. So, you know, as I've been trying to stress, if it's important to you, it's important to us. 
So if there's ever anything going on at your library that you want people to know about, please email me. Email me, call me, and you know, uh, it might turn into a STARS article. And if it doesn't turn into a STARS article, it will become a social media post. <laughs> Amy is saying that they have a quilting class that is small, but a very loyal following, and their literary society is going well. Okay. Um, Lisa, uh, circling back to legal services, is saying that they uh, use the... Uh, they partnered with the Americans for Immigrant Justice and Hispanic Unity of Florida to conduct an immigration legal service clinic program. She's, that's fantastic. I definitely would count that also as uh, something that uh, works well. Um, let's see. Oh, yes, this is actually some, one that I really wanted to know. Uh, what's one piece of advice that you would share with other library staff? Because I know we, um, you know, every day we always get new people in their roles and wanting to, you know, get acclimated as soon as possible, not quite sure how to get started, how to, you know, make their way forward. So what's one piece of advice that you would share with the library staff? Even if it's just, you know, make sure that you uh, put your trail tracker in a secure lockbox so that it doesn't disappear. <laughs> okay, Mary Garcia is saying be, uh, be creative. Also, welcome, Adam. It's so nice to meet you as a new director. I'm sure you've already been chatting with Emily, who uh, does all our chats with new directors. Oh, that's sad, Lisa. Um, Amy uh, Stolta saying, don't let yourself get overwhelmed. That's true. Don't give up is what Clarissa is saying. If you hear a no, try to reframe your question or idea. Uh, Adam is saying as a new director, one of the things he did was meet with each employee individually to gain their perspectives. That. Some really good advice. Yes, yeah, so they feel that they have a voice as uh, you pro as you progress. Very true. Very good. Um, so yeah, getting a lot, getting a lot of good advice. A lot of good advice. Uh, we are nearing the end of our time. Uh, oh, but uh, Noelia is saying for outreach, try to ask those who have been in similar positions longer. They usually know the community and what has worked in the past. Oh, that is some good advice. Amy is saying, asking um, each employee for three things they don't want changed and three things they wanted me to fix. That, uh, yeah. Definitely. Um, so we are approaching three o'clock and I don't want to keep any of you longer uh, than, uh, you know, what was scheduled. So uh, I'll go ahead and just move into the last bit of housekeeping here. And, you know, first of all, say thank you to all of you who um, came today and attended. I really appreciate you all taking the time out of your schedule to attend these quarterly meetings. Um, a few housekeeping things, as I said, uh, I'm working on a community engagement needs uh, assessment, and that is forthcoming. Uh, and as soon as that is available, I will be sending that out uh, through various channels. And it's, uh, I would really appreciate it that once you see it uh, come across your radar that you would uh, fill that out because it will help me develop the program in a way that will uh, benefit all of you. That is my hope. <laughs> um, I'm also working on a Florida library marketing discussion with library staff. So if you feel that, you know, you have a lot to say about marketing and want to share that expertise with others, please email me. And I would love to get you, um, you know, included in that conversation once things start 
uh, coming together and we start really planning in earnest. I'm very excited to be putting that together because I know it'll be helpful, especially with the conversation we had earlier and how so many of you said that you needed, excuse me, that you uh, wanted some assistance with marketing. And then finally, uh, a follow-up email will be sent after this meeting. It will have the chat log, a link to the recording of this video, and uh, all the resources uh, shared during this meeting. Uh, you will also be sent a post-call a post call survey. I know we're all very fatigued from uh, surveys, but uh, this survey helps me know what's working and what's not working with these uh, conversations, how to improve them, things to take out, things to add. Uh, things you would like me to include on the agenda or things to talk about in general. So it would just really mean a lot to me if you could uh, fill out that survey when it comes your way. And with that, that concludes our uh, meeting for uh, Connection Creators for January. The next one will be uh, sometime in the next quarter, perhaps in April. But uh, thank all of you. Uh, for being here and have a great rest of your afternoon and may it be warm where you are because <laughs> I am tired of winter. <laughs>